Welcome everyone to this first look at the Redivis RT97L. This is an awesome 25 watt GMRS repeater uh, that does have a port on the side of it. And we're going to get into what this thing is, what its power output is. So join me on the DIY Maker channel as we get into it. If you want a rare peek underneath the hood, stick around to the end. I'll void my warranty so you don't have to. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, do consider giving us a subscribe on the channel here. It really helps us out with the algorithm and all of that good YouTube stuff. And also do consider using my affiliate links. It really helps support the channel. And, uh, you know, we do earn from your, from your purchases, but it doesn't cost you any more than anywhere else. So, you know, do give us the like, give us a comment, do all of that stuff that really drives the YouTube algorithm wild. This is the unit itself. This entire chassis, the entire structure of the unit is die cast aluminum and it is beautifully done. Uh, they did not mess around with this. This chassis claims to be IP66. DB9 connection here, which you can use for a microphone or you can use a repeater ID unit on here and uh, get some additional functionality, but uh, this DB9 port has got some uh, interesting use on this unit. This is the power input. Um, now the power input only uses pins one and two, the ones down near the notch here. So one and two are gonna be your positive voltage in, and the center pin is going to be ground. So this thing in the manual claims to work from 15 to 24 volts. It does work fine on 12 volts. I'm going to show you a power output test in this evaluation using a lithium iron phosphate battery, and that's going to be 13.3 volts. But anything in that range is going to be fine on those pins. And here we've got the um, standard UHF antenna connection on the other end. So pretty simple, not a lot really going on here to hook up, but uh, the controls and everything, again, very well done. And along this uh, perimeter of both halves of this case is a full custom-made rubber gasket all the way around both sides. So this thing is meant to, uh, meant to be out in the wild. Also comes with a nice leather handle here. Um, I might one day change mine for a web one, but, um, uh, it, it's fine. I mean, it's going to be very serviceable for a long period of time. Now, spec wise, this unit claims to put out 25 Watts. And sometimes, um, when we have units that have a, um, a lot of internal components in order to act as a true repeater, um, we don't actually get that output out, but, uh, in my test, you're going to see on this one, we actually do get some very favorable results. Now, the duplexer is usually where a lot of that energy goes. And the duplexer on this is, is a no-joke, self-contained unit. Um, it's, it's all really good spec gear. This is the AC supply. It's got a nice little LED down here to tell us that it's on. And it outputs 15.5 volts. And uh, it holds up the load just fine on this guy. And uh, we're going to get him hooked up in a minute. But I did want to just take a really quick look at what comes in the box here. We get a manual, which is okay. I mean, um, Redivus manuals, uh, the English is, is fair. I mean, you can understand everything you need in here. Um, but I think if you're going to really start programming this guy for, you know, different um, CTSS and, and, uh, and other codes to, to limit access to the repeater, you're going to want to use this programming port, which comes with it. You also get some mounting tabs so that you've got plenty of options for getting this mounted to your shack or your RV or whatever. And this is the 12 volt inlet. 
and I'm going to show you this unit uh, doing a power test both on this connection and the AC connection. So let's get to that. Now, one thing you want to do if you're going to use this also as a base unit, you're also going to potentially want to get a microphone with the DB9. Now, Redivis does have these available on their various outlets, so do, do look into one of those. But that's going to allow us to key the transmitter and get an output power here. Next thing we're going to do is get the uh, load hooked up. So before I even apply power on this, I'm going to get my uh, going to get my dummy load, which is right here, and my power meter okay. Power meter is ready to go. Now we're going to take the uh, AC power cord and put in there. Okay, we can see we've got power now. And let's go ahead and key that mic and see if we can get a, uh, get a power output here. Sure can. So that is indicating 24 and a quarter watts out, which is pretty darn good. And that's just running it on the AC power. The inlet power spec for this is 15 to 24 volts. So you could potentially get a little bit more power. And important to note, this is after the duplexer. So that's where you generally have a lot of losses with repeaters like this. Um, but this guy is actually getting the job done. It's meeting, it's pretty much meeting its rated uh, output spec here. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch the power over to a lithium iron phosphate battery. And just so you can see it, this is my enormous Life Epo battery. Okay, now we're up on the. Uh, on the 12 volt supply, or actually 13.33 volts, if we're being picky. Now let's key that mic again. You can see we're getting 18.7, 18.62. Those are pretty respectable power specs for a unit this compact. Um, I got to say, I am favorably impressed. This unit measures just a little over 11 inches wide. With the handle, eight inches tall, and in thickness, just about three inches thick. Well, let's get a weight on this real quick. So yeah, that unit's pretty solid. That is seven pounds, 13.9 ounces. So, I mean, seven pounds, 14 ounces. That's, that's quite a load of radio there. So if you are using this as a base station, uh, you do have volume controls here for the microphone speaker unit. And if you hold the menu button, you can lock the panel so that it, can, it won't change. And then here you can scan through the different uh, different functions of the system. You can see your software version. You can tell how new this unit is. It's 1.1. Lots of values here, all explained in your manual. Now you can set this all up and then lock the channel so nobody can mess with it. So it will act as a repeater for you on a fixed frequency. So do I think this uh, Redivis unit is a good buy? <laughs> you bet I do. Um, you get yourself a, uh, a way to ID this uh, on the air if you want. And you've got a really good solid solution for a GMRS repeater. So this, uh, this comes DIY maker approved. And uh, it is a really, really solid piece of gear. Okay, so you've got your 
RT97L all set up, but you want to take it up a level. Wouldn't it be so cool to have a message that automatically repeated on your GMRS repeater that would ID the channel, maybe direct them to a website or something to get permission to use a repeater or anything like that. You could do pretty much um, anything you want with this thing I'm about to show you. This comes from our friends at Repeater ID uh, here in California. This is their RT97L prototype. It is super, super cool. Take this guy out of the box there. Get rid of the case. And what we've got is a 3D printed chassis here. I am going to pull this cover off so that you can see what's going on inside here. There we go. We've got our microcontroller inside here. And a couple of switches that we can mess with. We can, we can control some of the behavior as it operates. I'll direct you to the manual at the um, repeater ID website. But what we want to do to hook this guy up is just take the DB9 pass-through cable, hook it up there. This is the lid, tells us that's the repeater connection. We're going to unhook the microphone from our repeater. Hook the repeater ID up. And then we can either use this microphone on the DB9, or we can use a K1 connector into this set of ports as well. It doesn't matter. It works the same way. But what I want to do is I have a radio set up here. Uh, this little guy already tuned to the channel that this is on. And if we press this button, it will automatically do the uh, repeater announce. And this is the default message that comes on the unit. So let's get a listen to that. That is so cool. Now, Repeater ID will actually do that recording in that lovely gentleman's voice if you don't want to uh, record your own. But you can record your own message on here. There's instructions on their website of how to do all that work. And basically, all you need to do after you get it recorded is plug in a USB cable into this port, into your PC, and then transfer, transfer that very carefully prepared um, mp3 file onto this device and because it is a compressed format for the audio you do get quite a lot of message length um, I've experimented with some for myself I use some AIs to create some different uh, ID sounds for me I'm going to test them out and see which ones I like Welcome to Repeater WRBK672 Please use responsibly this repeater is operated by WRBK672. But, you know, let's listen to this again. Just the, the audio quality is excellent. Welcome to Repeater ID. To load your call sign audio, see the README file on the device storage or visit repeaterid.com. Now, as you can see, we're just on a dummy load here, but there's enough spurious RF, you know, leaking out of all of this that it's able to light up this little radio off to the side, no problem. But the, uh, the repeater ID stuff is exceptionally well made, well designed, well thought out, and uh, they are a great value for getting this done for not a whole lot of money. And uh, snap the case back together, Get this guy mounted, and you are off to the races. I really do love the K1 connections as well. But only use one microphone at a time. If you're going to use the DB9, then stick with that. If you're going to use the K1, then stick with that. But uh, if you're not going to use this as a base station at all, and you just want it to do purely repeater work, that's literally all you need. You don't need the mic at all. 
So I want to thank Repeater ID for lending me a unit to use for this review. Um, like I said, their stuff works really, really well. And um, I'll put a link down in the bottom for a discount from the DIY maker on Repeater ID items in their store. As promised, here's your look under the hood. Here's the three switches on the front panel. Here's the display for the radio. And these are the two outputs from the radio board. This whole board here is the radio itself. And this is the input from the I.O. that comes in from the side. And then we've got this beautiful molded rubber gasket that goes all the way around the perimeter, including the screws. So that's where this thing gets its waterproofing and its dust proofing from. Let's take a look at the other side. This is the high side output off the duplexer. And then we've got the low side output of the of the duplexer or input rather. And then here is the outlet. This is going to the antenna. And what's unique here is you could remake this jumper and make it an end type connector for the output. Here's the duplexer itself, a completely assembled unit. So obviously they buy that and stick it in this hole. And this is the I.O. board off to the side. This is where all your input comes in. And again, we've got this lovely gasket all the way around this whole die-cast aluminum enclosure. It is a, a really solid way to construct a radio, in my opinion. Thanks for watching, everybody. Y'all have a great day.